everybody, welcome to Underground Comic Review. My name's Sean, and today I will be reviewing Central Fugal Bumble Puppy number 8. This comic came out in 1988, and this is the final issue. The cover art is by Kristen Katar. I really like the cover art, it really grabs your attention. And I find when I'm running through my collection, I always find myself taking another look through it. Alrighty now, let's crack this baby open. The inside cover features the table of contents disguising itself as an ad page, with fake ads about things like getting a fuller bosom put between the artist's names. On the next page, we have Centrifugal Manifesto, where Joe Sacco, the comic director, explains why they're ending Centrifugal's publication. It comes off as a bit rambly and a little bit bitter. Underneath, though, is a cool little section where the comic contributors have a self-portrait next to the name and title, which I think is pretty cool because you feel like you know their personalities a little more, which I find can give you a different perspective on their art. All right, first comic up to bat is Mr. Sensitive by Judy Becker, which has a really neat art style. In the story, Mr. Sensitive travels back in time to the 50s and uses his false sensitivity to take advantage of the burgeoning woman's rights movement. It's an interesting premise and it has a great punchline at the end. Next is Culture Shock by Lloyd Dangle and Pete Frederick, with Lloyd doing the art on panels 4, 7, 9, 13, and 15, and Pete doing the rest. The story is about when Pete Friedrich traveled from New York City to California to visit his fellow cartoonists, eat some mushrooms, and get into various other adventures. It's a fun read, and the narration makes you feel as if it's a good friend telling you the story. Also, Pete and Lloyd's art are very different from each other, but I find they blend surprisingly well. After that, we have Idol with the Golden Head by Craig Bartlett, with words by Jerry Lieber and Mike Stoller. It's a song about said idol with art to represent the lyrics. We next have a really nice one-pager by Evan Dorkin called A Day of Change. It's about street beggars and charity in general, with a message that really gets you thinking. Now we have W. Honest, long titled... Sitting around Scotty's bar with Luther Humphrey and Bink. It's about a couple of bar league baseballers at their favorite bar having a few drinks and telling terrible inside jokes while they discuss women and marriage, all the while coming off as dumber and more vain as the story progresses. After that, we have an ad for Neat Stuff with art by Peter Bagg. And after that, we have Bar Talk Duets by Paul Allsway. In his story, a friend is trying to explain the history of the word cappuccino, despite only knowing the loose facts, much to the disdain of his annoyed friend. We have another ad up next, and it's one for The Complete Crumb. And after that ad comes Welcome to Retail Hell by Craig Maynard, a comic I relate to a little too well. This comic is about what it's like to work in retail and how awful it can be to work an unsatisfying job and the ridiculous things some customers say and do. It's done very accurately, and it's kind of funny that it still applies today more than 20 years later. I like the art too, it's very crisp and clean. There's also a great Stephen King jab that's worth mentioning. We have another one here by Lloyd Dangle called We All Live on a Garbage Barge. It's about a group of garbage barge workers who are looking for a place to dump their load. They come up empty-handed until they find a contra barge filled with Ronald Reagan's cocaine, which they proceed to steal for their own monetary gain. As you can imagine, the story comes off a bit dated. We have another one-pager here with a great title. It's Mississippi Joe Fetus in Get Me a Small. And fortunately, the comic isn't as funny as the name. In the comic, Mississippi Joe Fetus encounters an eclipse and experiences temporary blindness. Now we have another ad, this time it's for Buzz Bomb, an anthology of the work by artist Kaz. And after that is Scott Nichols' The Horror of It All, which is a simple story about aging and its miserable effects on the human body. Next is my favorite piece in the book called Who's the Leader of the Club by Devlin Thompson. It's a bunch of funny takes on the Mickey Mouse name. My favorites are the two Mickey Marks and the Mickey Mouse. Now for the final story, which is titled Blue Sunday. In the story, a space priest accidentally destroys the world because he had to poop. And instead of using the flushing lever, he pulls the atomic bomb lever. I'm kind of confused why they're so close. There's also a couple ads in the back cover as well. The one on the inside is an ad for Prime Cuts, and the one on the outside is an ad for Yahoo Comics, Joe Sacco's new comic he started in lieu of Centrifugal Bumble Puppy's demise. Well, that does it for the final issue of Centrifugal Bumble Puppy. Overall, I'll say it's a decent comic with some fun reads, some cool art, and some good laughs too. Though there are a few lackluster comics, and I can kind of see why they ended up going out of print. But I'd have to say in the end, if it's pricey, don't worry about picking it up, but if it's cheap, jump all over it. Well, that does it for this episode of Underground Comic Review. I hope you like what you saw. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good one. Beep.